Overtime. Sponsored by Wendy's. They got you for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and everything in between. High school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello and welcome to Overtime, our weekly look at high school sports in the state line. I'm Scott Lubber. And I'm David Greenberg. As always, we have 30 minutes full of high school sports coverage for you. We'll catch up with Guilford standout cross-country runner Michelle Gasmond. As a sophomore, she's already one of the best runners in the state. In our Glory Days segment, we'll look back at the 2013 state champion Stillman Valley football team. Plus, it's time to crown conference champions in our Battle of the Stadiums contest. And later, we'll get to know Guilford diver Jaden Greenlee. But we begin with the, new, the big news of the week in high school sports. The IHSA says it will allow the basketball season to go on as scheduled. Practices will begin November 16th. Games can begin November 30th. The IHSA made this decision despite the move Tuesday by Governor Pritzker and the Illinois Department of Public Health to reclassify basketball as a higher risk sport. But IHSA board members say there's just not enough evidence that basketball is dangerous to play despite rising COVID cases in the state. They point to how successful the fall sports season has been and how successful fall contact days have gone for football and for other sports. We really didn't have any um, indications and, and I don't know that anybody could point to circumstances where that went poorly or, you know, cases were spiking as a result of that activity. You know, we've reached a point where we really need to do something that is student uh, centered and get these students back competing. And, and in, in their opinions, uh, we can do it safely. And I think that's where collectively the board, through their discussions, really landed on, you know, this is the time. It'll be up to the schools and conferences to decide whether or not they will allow their basketball teams to compete this winter. Again, we want to emphasize each school and conference still has to determine whether or not they're going to play to allow the boys and girls to take the court. So nothing is set in stone yet. Now, these winter sports that are lower risk will go on this winter. Boys swimming and diving, girls and boys bowling, competitive cheerleading, competitive dance, and gymnastics. Their seasons will also go on as scheduled with protocols in place. The one winter sport that has been impacted is wrestling. The IHSA has moved that sport from the winter season to the shortened summer season. It will start in mid-April and run to the end of June. The fall sports season wraps up this weekend. Yeah, it does. Things have gone fairly smooth this fall. Golf and tennis finished up a week ago. That left swimming and cross country. Last Saturday, cross country runners were at Sports Core 2 for Class 3A regional action. Let's we'll start with the girls race, picking it up around the first corner. You see Guilford's Michelle Gasman in a, in a tight pack in third place. She stood firm in third all the way until the very end when she turned on the Jets and ran away with it winning by almost 15 seconds. Despite the win, Guilford came in sixth place as a team, with Hananiga capturing second thanks to placing three runners in the top 10. Afterwards, Guilford discussed her, Ga excuse me, Gasman discussed her strategy of playing the long game. So I knew that they were gonna go out fast and I kind of paced myself so I wouldn't go out too fast. I still had a, a lot at the end. So I stayed behind them for most of it. And then at the end, I started to challenge them. So I kind of just took it from there then. To the boys race, there was a lot of high level competition in the field. These boys showed how close it would be right from the get go. Check out the first turn. Look at this huge group of runners. It would thin out from there, and Auburn's Peter Maculin would be one of the ones to separate himself. Here he is in the home stretch. His time of 16 minutes, 10 seconds was good for second place behind DeKalb's Riley Newport. Maculin helped the Knights do a fifth place finish. Hananiga finished one spot better in fourth. Nathan Hallbrader was their top finisher, coming in ninth place. As a senior, Maculin has one race remaining this, seat this weekend at the sectional, and he has one goal in mind. My, my mindset is find that guy who beat me and beat him uh, at sectionals. I always try and push myself to be better and I think that physically I'm there. It's just being able to make the right move at the right time and that's all I've been trying to do, just keep improving. There was another regional cross country meet last Saturday at Oregon for Class 1A teams. The Winnebago girls went in as the heavy favorites. They did not disappoint. They won the team championship 
and they were missing two of their top runners, but the Indians still placed five runners in the top 11. As usual, senior Natalia Martino led the way. She was the individual champ. She won by 10 seconds. Marissa Rogensack and Renee Rittmeyer took third and fourth place for Bago, and Sophia Martino took sixth. Rockford Christian finished second in the team standings with Kelly Giardina taking fifth place. Winnebago and Rockford Christian advanced to this week's 1A sectional. My goal today was to be able to try and win it again because then I would be the four-time regional champion and I was able to accomplish that. In the boys 1A regional in Oregon, Rockford Christian dominated. Seniors D'Artagnan Beaver and Stephen Thomas finished first and second. Not far behind them were teammates Weston Ford in fourth place and Ethan Walsh in fifth. Rockford Christian advanced to the Seneca sectional along with East Dubuque, Byron Dupac, and Rockford Lutheran. We're a great team. We don't really have any like big name superstars, so we got a bunch of guys who just work hard and work every day. Our team spreads good for pack running, so breaking up the sections and running ways is kind of hard for our team, but all of our guys did good running solo. So. At Byron last Saturday, it was girls swimming and diving sectional action. This is Byron Jr. Lacey Long pulling off a reverse one and a half somersault tuck. She won the diving. Next is the 200 freestyle, and Byron sophomore Audrey Kilmer takes that event. In the 200 individual medley, Byron junior Kate Schilling will hold off Auburn sophomore Ursula Koch. Next is the 50 freestyle, and Boylan's Nia Karras not only won, she set a new sectional record. She later set another sectional record time when she won the 100 freestyle. Karras was named the swimmer of the meet. Byron won the team championship, Boylan finished second, and Hananiga third. Coming up next, Guilford cross-country runner Michelle Gasman has been unbeatable all season. We'll get some insights into her approach to the sport. And later in our Glory Days segment, we'll take you back to 2013 when Stillman Valley won a thriller of a state championship game. Welcome back. The cross-country season is wrapping up this weekend, and who's someone you've got your eye on as sectional? Personally, it's Guilford's Michelle Gasman. I got a chance to talk to her after she won her regional last Saturday. If you were to head out to one of the local high school cross-country meets, you may find a familiar face at the front of the pack. You may even think to yourself, she must come from a running family. Well, you'd be wrong. Meet Michelle Gasmond. No one in my family is a runner. <laughs> I'm kind of the athlete of the family. But she can always count on them for their support. I think they started to realize that I was getting better at it. And, you know, I really ended up liking it. So they got more involved. Gasmond is one of the most talented young runners in the Nick 10. And as a sophomore this season, she won the individual conference title. This year has been a great year for her because she's learned a lot. She's learned um, how to be part of a team and to lead a team. And to come out here to win the conference championship and then to, today to come back with the regional championship, she, she ran like a veteran runner. I want to, you know, go to state each year and do good at that and then just see the progress and look back at it. She also has some more long-term goals. I definitely want to compete in college. I see all these people running for college and how, like, they say it's so fun, but they work hard and it's a family thing. And, you know, I'm into the sport in high school and to be in it and college and do good at college is going to be a, a really great experience. I think she has the ability to run beyond this, um, but she's got a lot, you know, she's only a sophomore. As fast as the time will go, it's still a long ways away. There's still a lot to learn. This was actually Gasman's first year at Guilford. Her freshman year, she attended Rockford East. It was sad. I didn't want to leave my friends at East, but, you know, I still keep in contact with them and, you know, I still say congratulations and all of that and I still hang out with them. Initially, it wasn't an easy transition. I mean, it was kind of hard at first, but then I realized, you know, there's still going to be a running team at Guilford, so I wouldn't be alone and I didn't have to, like, move and then not run. It was, it was hard, but it was also a great experience. She has made friends and relationships with everybody on the team, and she just jumped right in and just you blended right in with the team. In the summer when we started practicing, they were all like warmed up to me, I guess, and they like included me in everything. There was never a day where they just didn't include me. They're all really great friends, they're great people, and we're all like a huge family. Despite only being a sophomore, she's someone her teammates look up to and can count on. She's awesome to coach. She's a great, great kid, and she's an excellent leader for the team. I'm just keeping them, again, with the positive mindset. They 
telling them, oh, like, you can do it, great job. I'm never, like, negative with them. It's a relief when you have kids like that um, that are coachable and are willing to sacrifice her talent, I guess, for the better of the team. It says a lot about her. With this sport, you just got to keep telling yourself, like, you can, and you can't really, you know, say you can't or you want to give up. And it's not even that you can't, it's just you're saying you can't. So when you like say you can't in your head, your body follows. So with you saying you can or like, I'm good, I can go faster, I feel good, it just puts everything into a different pers perspective. You can tell she takes her running very seriously and she's very dedicated. Yeah, I was fortunate to watch her in that Nick 10 meet and she was on a level all by herself. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up shortly, it's week 11 in our Battle of the Stadiums competition. And we turn back the clock to 2013, the year the Stillman Valley Cardinals dug down deep to win their fifth state football championship. Stillman Valley has won five state championships in football. Each one is equally precious. But the one that had the most thrilling ending was the Cardinals' last one in 2013. That's the one we focus on now in our Glory Days segment. The Cardinals played St. Joseph Ogden in DeKalb on a windy, frosty evening. St. Joe's passing game was potent, but so was Stillman's running game. Both offenses dominated. Micah Castronovo was the first Cardinal to score an eight-yard touchdown in the first quarter. All-state fullback Zach Hare scored two more touchdowns in the second and third quarters. But the Cardinals still found themselves trailing with less than six minutes to play in the fourth quarter when St. Joseph Ogden quarterback Dalton Walsh connected with Hunter Hart for a 22-yard score. It was 35-28 Spartans. Walsh passed for three touchdowns. But back came the Cardinals with 119 to play. Hare scored his third touchdown from a yard out, capping off a 12-play drive. It was 35-35 and headed to overtime. The Cardinals had the ball first and you knew they were going to Hare. He again powered in for a touchdown. Moments later, he added this two-point conversion and Stillman led 43 to 35. But St. Joseph Ogden answered with a touchdown run to slice the lead to two. So it came down to this conversion attempt and Walsh got smothered by a blitzing Logan Alberts with help from Eddie Torrance and that sealed the deal. The Cardinals won 43 to 41 in overtime State championship number five was in the bag. Joining me now on the phone to discuss that great championship game is former Stillman fullback and linebacker Zach Hare. Zach, there were so many big plays in that game, and it was such a back-and-forth game. It was fitting that it went into overtime. Of all those plays, all those moments, which one stands out the most to you? I think definitely the last, um, even though I wasn't necessarily involved, I uh, was able to kind of be back there and, Watched all of our work pay off all into one moment was something that was super special for all of us. So that was the failed conversion attempt by St. Joseph Ogden. Now, did, did you get a good look at Logan Alberts firing off the line and were you at all surprised that he would be the guy to make that play getting the sack? <laughs> I, I was on the field. I was right behind Logan. Um, and I wasn't surprised at all. Um, Logan's still one of my best friends these days and just how tough he is and to be able to you know, just kind of squirt through that line and make that play was it was awesome. Do you recall what your coaches called on defense, that conversion attempt? What was the plan there defensively? Not exactly what it was called. Um, I knew we did kind of throw in a little something different where we did a little bit of a twist where uh, Logan actually went through a different hole that he was hitting all game long. So I took the, took the lineman that one, and he was able to get through and make that play. On offense, the coaches kept feeding you the ball throughout the game. You had 39 carries, so it was no surprise to anyone that you would get the ball again in overtime. How determined were you in overtime to get it into the end zone for both the touchdown and the conversion? Absolutely. We were, we were all determined. I mean, the last two scores were necessary. Um, by the help of that line, like always, uh, not getting in wasn't an option that day. So in that overtime situation, we just had to get it done. You mentioned the offensive line. There was Wyatt Stockton, Tom Hess, Orion Peterson, Chris Bronze, Connor Engelkiss. I mean, you had a pretty big physical group on that line that year, didn't you? I did. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily big, but I was absolutely physical. Um, I had the privilege to kind of stand behind those guys and watch them move kids that were bigger than them. So it was impressive to watch. And like I always say, the credit always goes to them. And what made your performance that game even more impressive was the fact you were playing somewhat injured. Uh, how banged up were you? <laughs> it was a long season. Um, I had dealt with a shoulder problem all year and then an ankle 
situation that stemmed late, but at the end of the day, you know, you just put that pass in, just kind of grind through it. We had a lot of other guys that were just as banged up as I was, so. In a championship game, the adrenaline is running sky high, and you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a great team for four quarters, and then you've got to somehow dial it up again and find the energy to battle in overtime. How exhausted were you guys? I think it was a collection of all the years. We had a very tough game after the state game, so we were all exhausted. Um, but at the end of the day, we all had to look at it from the standpoint of this is going to be a lot of our last games of football that we ever play um, competitively. So we just had to finish that strong. You know, one of the things Coach Lawler mentioned after the game was what a great life lesson a game like that could be about never giving up, never giving in. And he hoped that that would be something all you guys would take forward and apply to the rest of your lives. So can you to this day draw from that experience and can you say you're a better person today for having played high school football and for having been a Stillman Valley Cardinal? Absolutely. Um, I think the two words that we kind of carried with us were discipline and adversity. I mean, when we were the ones who had to fight for everything that we had earned and uh, we can honestly say that we, were, that we became better people on and off the field. And I think that carries into a lot of our uh, professions to this day. Our thanks to Zach Hare for joining us to reflect on that thrilling state championship win by the Cardinals. Zach, by the way, now works as a sheriff's deputy in Ogle County. Coming up next, Jaden Greenlee is one tremendous diver for Guilford, but there's much more to her than that. David Greenberg chats with her in our Getting to Know You segment. Right now, it's time for our overtime trivia question. The Stillman Valley has won five state championships in football. What Illinois school holds the record for the most state championships in football? I'll have the answer after the break. Once again, here's our overtime trivia question. Stillman Valley has won five state championships in football. What Illinois school holds the record for the most state championships in football? The answer is Joliet Catholic with 14. That is one more than Chicago Mount, Mount Carmel has won. Well, girls swimmers and divers wrapped up their season last weekend. Guilford senior Jaden Greenlee was one of the area's top divers. She had a great season. What do you, what do you say we get to know her a little bit better? This is a hard one. Uh, There's so one, many right? people. Oh, goodness. I don't even know. Well, I was always into, like, tumbling and stuff, and it came to a point where I didn't like tumbling anymore, so my mom suggested for me to try diving, so I did, and I really liked it. Okay. Were you, like, a gymnast growing up? Yes. Yeah. I really like fried chicken. Fried chicken? Anyone yes. in particular? No, anything. Just, just from anywhere? Yes. Okay, so like like fried chicken on the bone or like fried chicken on the sandwiches? Bone. On the bone. I like okay. it on the bone. Interesting. We just get it wherever I can. My dad also loves it. So like every now and then when my mom's like out of town or something, we just go get fried chicken because she doesn't like right. it. Right, and it's like don't tell mom, right? Yeah. Oh, she's going to find out now. <laughs> my favorite animal is a horse. A horse? Okay, yes. Okay, how come? Um, my grandparents actually own a horse farm, so I get to show horses over the summer with them. No way, that's yes. so cool. So there's like this like wagon at like the Boone County Fair and stuff, and you hook the horses up to the wagon and we like steer them. Well, you've cool. told me a lot of cool stuff already. <laughs> you might have covered all the material, I don't know. I know, I feel like lots of people think like the coolest thing about me is like how I live here in the city, but then on weekends they just see me like out in the country just like doing crazy stuff like mudding or wrestling my donkeys or something. What? You wrestle donkeys? <laughs> yeah, my donkeys are crazy, so I have to try and get them into the stall, so I have to like wrap my arm around its neck and try and wrestle it in. Oh my goodness, and so this is at your grandparents' farm? Mm-hmm. Wow. So you're out there like you're doing school during the week, you've got diving, and then you're going out and you're wrestling donkeys on the weekend. Yes. That is crazy. That's super cool, by the way. So you answered the question perfectly. A diver who also has donkeys. That's gotta be a first. Yeah, I'd have to say so. Yeah, the field is thinning out, meanwhile, in our Battle of the Stadiums contest this past week was round two of our semifinals. In the Nick 10, Belvedere North received 64% of the vote to defeat Freeport. In the Big Northern, Stillman Valley received 68% of the vote to beat North Boone. In NUIC, Pecatonica picked up 76% of the votes to defeat AFC. And in an area battle, Rochelle received 76 to defeat DeKalb. That brings us to the showdown for the conference championships this week. And here are the contestants. <laughs>
Vote for your favorites by going to our website, mystateline.com. Look for the Battle of the Stadiums tab or image. We'll be right back. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Overtime. Sponsored by Wendy's. They got you for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and everything in between.